So finally, it is here! Oh. Hey buddy, I brought you some news for your next video. Oh, I was actually talking about it. The James Webb Telescope, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the James Webb Telescope, of course. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So finally, after 10 years and spending 30 billion dollars, James Webb had been launched and many people talked about it this whole time. Yeah. Even me. Yes, but why so many people talking about this telescope? Um, well, we will talk about it now. We have all seen the launch of the James Webb Telescope into space and heard a lot of news about it. Currently, in this moment while I'm speaking to you, James Webb is getting farther and farther from the Earth and the Moon until it reaches a distance approximately 1,500,000 kilometers from the Earth. Scientists have sent many telescopes to space and Earth's orbit, but many people talk about this specific telescope. What is special about it and why is it so important? Well, let's start with the first question. Oh, uh. Uh, what is the James Webb Telescope? Well, James Webb Telescope is a telescope that was developed by NASA and the European and Canadian Space Organization, which is planned to be the Hubble Telescope. The Hubble Telescope is the well-known telescope that opened a new window for us about the universe. Thanks to Hubble, we were able to discover many things about the cosmos and change a lot of things forever like bending of light, which we explained in, in the previous videos. Hubble used to monitor spectra from 0.1 to 1 micrometer. Or for those who don't speak in numbers, the near ultraviolet, visible and near infrared spectra is the only thing that Hubble can detect. These are the only wavelengths that Hubble is able to see, but James Webb will detect the lower frequency range of visible light with long wavelength to mid infrared from 0. 0.6 to 23.3 micrometers, which will allow us to detect high redshifted waves that are coming from the early universe, and they are too far for Hubble to detect. The planned mission period for James Webb Telescope is 10 years. If it works very well, this amount of time will be enough for what kind of purpose that we have for James Webb. The weight of this telescope is 6,000 kilograms and its dimensions are 20 meters by 40 meters. Scientists spent 10 billion dollars on this telescope and it took them 30 years to build it. Yes, 30 years! While you were busy listening to the news about the Soviet Union fall, the Balkan war, the Somali war, the Chechen war, 9-11, the Iraq war, smartphone, Arab Spring, Japanese tsunami, political disagreement, and the worldwide pandemic, and many other things, scientists were busy building James Webb Telescope, and after they completed building it, it was launched by the rocket Area 5 on 25 December 2021, and it's the largest space telescope has been built so far. Let's talk about the main parts of the telescope. You ready? Uh, wait, hold on a minute. Perfect, let's go. Like any telescope, there is a primary mirror that reflects the light to the secondary mirror, which also transfers to the enchained electronic picture board to show us the pictures. There is a stabilization flap which is supposed to give the telescope the balance for the movement of the telescope in order to be able to take the right photos from the right places. There is also a large sun shield that made of five layers of silicon and a material called Kepton, covered with aluminum. Each layer of the sun shield is 21 meters length, which aims to keep the James Webb cooled, with a temperature equal to 50 Kelvin or minus 223 degrees Celsius or minus 370 Fahrenheit, and keeping it cool while capturing infrared images or keeping it cool from the radiation that may be emitted from the sun earth or the moon that may cause some damage to the parts of the telescope. The telescope should be kept cool so it can take infrared images without any external interference. 
So, NASA will send it into the L2 orbit. This orbit is a perfect for James Webb because it's far enough to stay cool and close enough to send information to the Earth. James Webb also has five solar arrays that are supposed to supply James Webb with two kilowatts of power for the duration of the mission. There is also a communication antenna that sends information back to Earth, which will be at least 28.6 gigabytes of information twice a day. In other words, James Webb can send 57.2 gigabytes of information to Earth. It doesn't mean that James Webb have to send this amount of the information every day. It just means that James Webb has the ability to send this amount of information every day. The telescope primary mirror, which is also the optical part of the telescope, consists of 18 pieces gold-plated beryllium hexagonal mirrors, which are almost curved in shape so that all the light is reflected back to the center of the mirror. One of these pieces is 132 centimeters long, which makes up a large set of 6.5 meters long mirrors unlike the 2.4 meter Hubble telescope. This site that was set by scientists and engineers will help the James Webb telescope to detect lights from 30 billion light years away. Okay, keep going. Questions, man, the questions. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, what will the James Webb telescope see? Well, James Webb has a four types of observing systems. The first one, which is called NIRCAM. By using it, it will be possible for us to determine the number of stars in nearby galaxies, track newly formed stars in our galaxy, and monitor objects in the Kuiper belt in the solar system. And if you don't know what the Kuiper belt is, it is a region in the solar system that exists beyond planet Neptune, in which there are many comets, asteroids, and other bodies that are mostly made of ice. NIRCAM is equipped with the coronagraph. My telescoper fellows will understand what I'm talking about. In every telescope, for example my telescope, there is a something in the center of the main tube before the endoscope and the focusing lens which is called coronagraph. I know right? Bad name. In order to see objects and planets around the stars, we need something that blocks the light of the star in order to see the planets clearly. In fact, we do this here every day, putting our hand on the sun so we can see our way. One of the most important uses of the coronagraph is in the sun monitoring which will allow us to see the coronal mass ejection. Again, I know, horrible names. The second tool near spec. Everybody in space has a spectrum of color depending on the chemical reaction that occurs to it. This spectrum will allow us to know the heat, mass and chemical contained in this body. But it will take a long time for the scientists to detect these kind of lights. Well, James Webb has the solution for it. And scientists call it the micro shutter system. In this system simply, there are close to 250,000 shutters. Through these shutters, James Webb will be able to block irrelevant starlight and detect stars or objects that reflect the spectrum of light we are looking for. Will the color of the planets help us on the search for aliens or life outside the Earth? Certainly, because three and a half billion years ago, plants on Earth were purple because of the presence of chlorophyll D and retinol, which aim to attract more light using this color. This chemical reaction can be observed thousands of light years away. The third one, FGS or Phi Guidance Sensor. This sensor was used in the Hubble Space Telescope. Its goal is to provide information for spacecraft and is used as a guidance tool for spacecraft and as a scientific tool for astronomy. Simply, FGS point the telescope at the targets and it will stick and hold to these targets. So, we're done with this one too. 
Steven from North Korea has a question. Yeah, wait. Did you say Steven from North Korea? Well, we gotta be right. Um, sorry, yeah, yeah, keep going. There are dust clouds all over the universe which exist as a result of star exploding or just not enough stars in that region. Many of these clouds have a high density which will not be helpful for infrared detection. What we can do about it? Well, here comes the last and fourth tool of James Webb which is called MARI. MARI system is equipped with a camera and a spectrograph. A spectrograph is a type of system used in physics which is used to separate and measure the spectral components of physical objects. MARI will use infrared waves that are a little bit longer, so it can cross these thick clouds. As for MARI's optical sensors, we will easily observe the redshifted light from the early galaxies and the rest of the bodies that formed at that time. Like other huge and successful scientific projects, Mary has a problem. The problem with Mary is that when he detects infrared lights, the temperature inside the system will rise, and he will not be able to receive an infrared image from the universe. Instead, he will receive its own heat and other devices. But scientists have a solution for it, a cryocooling system. Simply, this system will pass helium through the pipes to different areas of the system, which is almost similar to the way that the refrigerators work. How much the temperature of Mary should be? Well, it should be at least 6.7 Kelvin or minus 266 degrees Celsius. Yes, um, I'm American, so can you... Which also means that Mary should be at least minus 447 Fahrenheit. Oh, thanks pal. Always have to be different. In this moment, while I'm speaking to you, James Webb Telescope is moving 2700 kilometers per hour towards L2. It will take approximately 60 to 90 days for all the parts of the James Webb to open. I did not make a video about James Webb Telescope in its first day of launch and I made it now because there was a risk of failure and some other problems when opening the telescope parts. But now James Webb has gone through all the difficult stages to unlock all the parts of the telescope, especially the two sides of mirror and the sun shield. So one more question, can James Webb see an ant moving on the earth? Hmm. As we explained before. If we want to see the aliens, we don't need to see them with our own eyes. James Webb can use infrared radiation to see the amount of heat from the entire solar system through which we will able to see the planets that revolve around the star in the perfect orbit, such as the Earth. Not too cold, not too hot. In addition, we will be able to discover planets from other stars by observing the star's light. If there's an amount of occultation, this means there are planets orbiting that star. Today, we have explained to you the most important things that this telescope can do and serve science. In the future, especially from this year to the coming years, James Webb will discover many things that will definitely change the course of cosmic science, as Hubble did before. You know, it's interesting, because me and probably you are not scientists or like NASA engineers, but we get so happy when scientists discover something or like launch a rocket. We just get happy when we see the science accomplishments. Maybe me and you don't have the enough money or the power to discover or invent stuff like scientists do. But in the end, <laughs> we are just curious hairless monkeys who are just wondering about the universe and the skies. We hope you will stay safe until you see what this telescope can do. Yeah, me too. Well, I have to hold on a minute. You've been comparing James Webb and Hubble telescope all the time and give an example about it. What is so important about Hubble telescope and why it's famous? The scientist or the telescope? Whoa, wait, a scientist? Hubble is a person? Well, 
we will leave this topic for another video. Until that day, do not stop wondering.